So, uh, to compute the derivative of gamma at zero, uh, we see that using the formula for gamma, gamma t is, sorry, gamma zero, the derivative of gamma at zero is d d t at t equal to zero, a plus t k, c, a plus t k. And uh, the computation is easy. Uh, that is d d t t equal zero, a plus t k, then d d t t zero, phi a plus t k. The first part is simply k, okay. The second part by the chain law, by the chain law, this will equal the derivative of phi at a, then the derivative of a plus tk, that is k. So this is c prime a k. But the phi prime, we already know that phi prime is the <coughs> phi prime a, uh, we know that phi prime a is the minus the inverse of derivative of g which respect to y at the point of p, then the derivative of z, uh, g, which is respect to z, uh, evaluating at the point of p, okay? We know this. Uh, so using this uh, phi point a formula, we can compute the phi point a acting on k. How to use this? Uh, we compute the C prime A acting on K. That is minus the inverse of this and then this, then acting on K. Uh, so we need to compute this. But uh, because the condition g prime p h is zero. We have not used this condition. We have not applied this condition. This means zero is g prime p h. g prime p is the derivative which is respect to z and the partial derivative which is respect to y. And then our h is k l. So this is. Um, the derivative which is respect to j k plus the derivative which is respect to y uh, l. Okay. So from this equation, from this equation, uh, this is an invertible matrix. Ah, the, the sorry, the derivative which is respect to y is invertible. So we apply apply the uh, sorry multiply both sides. Multiplying the derivative with respect to g, the inverse of this metric, to both sides, uh, we obtain that zero is the inverse of this metric, then k, then plus l. That is Minus, minus this is precisely L. But the minus of this is plus precisely phi point A K. Okay, look at the first line of this page. We, uh, using this, uh, using this result, using, using this result, we conclude that, uh, our phi point A K is precisely L. Okay, now let's go back to our Previous computation. Here, phi prime a k is precisely L. Okay, our computation is so that phi prime a k is precisely L. Therefore, our previous computation of gamma point zero now is k phi prime a k that is k L. Ah, 
that is KL. So gamma zero is K phi point A K ah uh, that is KL. KL is our H. So this proves that the tangent of our gamma at the point uh, P is H. Okay. So this complete the proof of our important proposition. And uh, this proposition is quite uh, predict, uh, quite special uh, comparing with our previous result. Uh, it, uh, it concerns on finding a map or finding a function. Okay, so naturally uh, we use the implicit function theorem. Uh, okay, uh, another way to get the a function or a map which the uh, uh, particular properties we want is to uh, find a differential equation and solving the differential equation. This will provide a second proof of this proposition. But uh, since this proposition is quite uh, technical uh, and uh, uh, I will not include the proof of the proposition using ordinary differential equation in my lecture but you can, uh, if you are interested in uh, applying the ordinary differential equation to prove this proposition, you might look at my uh, lecture note. Okay, so I will admit uh, that argument here. So uh, our next um, topic is constraint external. Ah. And the Laglands uh, multipliers method. Okay, so what's the problem? The problem we consider is this. Uh, suppose D uh, is an open subset, say in R4, uh, 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 and uh, F, G1, G2 are uh, functions over defined in the open set of D. Ah. So we want to uh, find the maximum value of this function F. Uh, F is uh, because D is four dimensional. So F has a uh, Four argument x, y, u, v. Uh, of course, we know how to find the local minimizer, local maximizer of our uh, multivaluable function uh, using differential calculus. Okay, but uh, this is not a usual extremal. Uh, it's a constraint. That is x, y, u, v are not freely uh, values in the open set D. Instead, they will uh, we require them to satisfy some uh, additional uh, restriction. Ah. so under constraint, uh, that is g1 x y u v is zero, and g2 x y u v also zero. Okay, so this is a new type of uh, extra extremal value problem. Uh, uh, the, the variables of the function under consideration uh, satisfy some additional uh, restriction. Okay, so how to solve this problem? So this is D. Uh, we want to find a point. This point satisfying uh, these two equations. So this define a set we denoted by M. So we need to find a point in the set M. So that the value of f uh, is maximal or minimal uh, over all the values uh, of f on m. Okay, this is the problem. But uh, in theoretically, this problem can be trans uh, can be converted into the usual uh, extremal value problem. How to do this? Uh, suppose. The length of the Jacobian metric of uh, G1, G2, that is G1 uh, 
啊，按照 G two。Is two. Suppose the rank of this metric is two. Then we might assume that uh, the last two columns uh, are linearly independent. That is G1, G2. The Jacobian determinant of G1, G2 with respect to UV is not zero. Okay? So if this determinant is not zero, we can solve from the from our system of equation G1 zero, G2 is zero to obtain the a part of uh, equation U is phi1 xy, v is phi2 xy. By the implicit function theory, uh, if the Jacobian determinant, this Jacobian determinant is not zero, then we can solve from this system of equation. We can express u and v using x and y from uh, g1 equal to zero and g2 equal to zero. Uh, this is an application of the implicit function theory. Okay. Now the problem of finding the extreme value of f under this constraint, uh, under this this trick condition, is equivalent to finding the extreme value of the composed composition function f x y express u by x y and uh, v also by x y. So. The problem of finding the extremal value, uh, uh constraint extremal, extremal value of the four valuable function f under the two, uh, constraint condition is converted to finding the free extreme value problem for this, uh, two valuable uh, function. Ah, uh, the right hand side of, the, of this is a two valuable function of x and y. Okay, and how to find this, uh, find this, the minimum value or maximum value of uh, this function of x, y is well known. Okay, so theoretically, this is okay. Unfortunately, uh, in many practical problems, it is difficult. Although theoretically, although theoretically, under the assumption, u and v can be expressed, u and v are functions of uh, x and y. But uh, the expression of u and v, uh, that is the expression of the function phi1 and phi2, are difficult to, to obtain. Uh, you could not, although the, the, the functional relation exists, but the expression of the function is hard to uh, obtain. So you, uh, without the precise expression of phi1 and phi2, the expression of this z as a function of x y is unknown, so you could not find the minimum value or maximum value of an unknown function, right? So, uh, so this approach will not work in many uh, problems. So, how to solve this?